walked into my mother's hospital room. She was wearing that horrendous checkered uniform that hardly covers your ass and looked close to death. Her eyes were yellow, a sign of what was to come. She was cradling it. A bundle laid in her arms and she rocked it back and forth. Promise me that you will take care of him. Take care of who? Him. Promise me you will take care of him. But there is nothing there. As she handed me the wrapped bundle, I stared back confused. I didn't understand. That was the last time I ever saw my mother awake. We were the ghetto kids who had decided to go to Scripps Ranch High instead of Hoover. I made the decision to go to Scripps because of all of the rumors swirling around the inner city high school. You'll get shanked in the bathroom. You'll get your ass beat for having something someone else wants. You'll end up pregnant. Would you want to go to a school that sounds like that? I'll wait. <laughs> I dreaded that 45-minute bus ride on the 15 North. Scripps, home of the Falcons, stepping out onto that smooth concrete, rid of gum spots. I felt like the Fresh Prince should have been playing in the background. <laughs> the transition from the hood to the white suburb was a culture shock. We flooded the campus like roaches every morning as the sun came up. Those eyes swept over us with what I thought was disgust, but now re realize may have been fear. All I saw was a sea of Abercrombie and Ugg boots, Jan Sport and skateboards. The girls looked like American Eagle models on daddy's credit card. I looked for something familiar and similar to home, but found nothing. If I was going to survive in this place, I needed to adapt, transform, and become a scrippy. <laughs> in order to survive, I studied the girls at school. Slowly, I stopped wearing my Nike Cortezes and faded jeans and hoodies, and instead wore dresses in bright colors. I changed the way I talked. Que onda ese became, hey guys, in my high-pitched tone. <laughs> in my junior year, my boyfriend of two years broke up with me, followed by rebound. He wasn't Mr. Right. He was Mr. Right now. I needed a distraction, and he was the band-aid over a broken heart. My body was seeking comfort, and he supplied it. And then I was a senior. Thinking about graduation and college opportunities and what the unknown future could potentially hold for me. Prom was at the Doubletree Hotel in Mission Valley. I wore a turquoise dress with a deep V, and I thought my boobs looked great. <laughs> the day after prom was like a scene out of Alien. I was lying on my bed in a sports bra when I felt my belly move and ripple. Something prodded, protruding my stretched skin. I thought, am I going to die? Do I have a creature that's getting ready to burst out of my chest? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> I watched as my body betrayed me with these foreign physical acts. Sure, I'd had had sex, but I still had a menstrual cycle, and I never experienced morning sickness, so I couldn't be pregnant. I am not pregnant. I cannot be pregnant. It was August. I had graduated with a diploma at the adult school I started attending after I dropped out of Scripps due to insufficient units. August 18th, I was in the living room. My brother and I had set up a table to play Monopoly. We had been playing for like eight hours because we take that shit seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember feeling this pressure on my abdomen in pockets of time. We put the game on hold and by the wee hours of the morning, I was in excruciating pain. 
My poor brother must have been so terrified when I screamed at the top of my lungs, just hit me with a fucking hammer, whatever it takes to make this pain go away. I told my brother to go to the nearest payphone and call my sister. When I entered that triage room in the ER, the nurse asked what no one else had. Are you pregnant? I was sitting in the chair where they take your blood pressure. I had asked my sister to step outside. I said nothing. She asked again, are you going to have a baby? I had been lying to myself from the very moment I had felt it. I could no longer keep the truth a secret. I think I understood the level of deniability I had grown accustomed to. Denial had been a heavy hitter up until this point. I had to finally accept the truth. <sighs> yes, I am pregnant. I did not want to be pregnant. My life plan did not include being pregnant, so my brain completely defied reality. How unbelievable, as intelligent as I am, that I could have been so good at lying to myself, and yet admitting the truth felt like a relief, like a sigh kept locked away for too long and finally getting its release. One epidural and 10 hours later, the doctor said, it's a boy. I cried, but I didn't say anything. I was speechless rendered silent for the first time in my life. Even my mind was still. That night, something drew me into the nursery. In my hospital gown and dragging the IV stand, I walked out of my room to find him. Curiosity tugged and gnawed at me. I needed to see what had been so unfamiliar to me for so many months. I sat in a corner rocking chair and the nurse brought him to me. In my arms, he lay peacefully. Those eyes were everything. They looked deep down into my soul, a soul I had never really paid too much attention to, being a teenager and all, but now knew its true meaning. I was meant to have him. It was the first time I ever connected with a piece of my flesh an undying moment of awe. Had I really been carrying this little human being inside of me for nine months without accepting it? My skin responded with goosebumps and nervous sweet sweat beaded on my forehead at the sight of him. A beautiful place and time that irrevocably changed my being in that instant. Malachi Joshua Torres was the answer to my shattered heart having lost so much and now gaining it back. In my existence, I had never really loved someone the way I instantly loved him. It's almost unexplainable how fast maternal instinct can kick in and take over all other emotions, including fear. I cradled him in my arms and kissed his forehead and thought, I will never let you go. I snapped my head up. It was like a bucket of cold water. An epiphany had suddenly shaken me to my core. Her words hit me like a ton of bricks. Promise me you will take care of him. Take care of who? Him. Promise me you will take care of him. But there is nothing there. When she had handed me that bundle, I had shaken out the pillow from the sheet. I had to show her that nothing was there. Her delirium had taken a hold of her psyche. My mother had passed away days after that. She had died by way of a classic story. Abuse led to addiction, led to death by alcohol. She left the earth on August 29, 2006, and Malachi had arrived on August 19, 2007. 10 days before my mother's first year anniversary. She had foreseen Malachi and was trying to tell me an, to keep an unknown promise. It sounds crazy when I say it out loud and you don't even have to believe it. I almost couldn't myself, but it was apparent in that very moment. 
Thanks, Mom. She had given me a gift without even knowing it, an insight. Thank you. Victoria.